and welcome to Looking Up. This is a podcast for Christian women. I'm Kathy Pollard, one of your hosts, and with me is Carla Moore, your other host. We're just a couple of really good friends living in two different states who like to get together and have good conversation. And we thought we would invite all of you to join us and listen in. And we talk about all different kinds of things. And today we're going to keep it pretty lighthearted and talk about our favorite things, which we've done before. Uh, But before we get into that, Carla, I know you have some exciting things going on. So why don't you tell us what all is going on in your life? Exciting. Exciting. Uh, Well, the um, Come Fill Your Cup retreat is coming up this weekend. I'm leaving for that tomorrow. So I always look forward to to seeing friends there and meeting new friends. And And you're uh, speaking. mm -hmm. What's your topic? We're talking about the Psalms this year. And so she divided them up. Christy Huntsman is in charge of it, I believe. I know there's other people involved, but she's assigned uh, different Psalms. And so my topic is Psalms of Lament. So we'll talk mm-hmm. about Lament Psalms and then I'll focus on Psalm 10. And um, I, I can't remember who all else is going to be there, but it's online so people could look it up. And I'm not sure even if they're going to record. Do they record these? Do you know? I know they have a virtual retreat, but I can't yes. remember if they. I think so. Okay. Well, we'll find I'm not out. Sure. Yeah, we'll yeah. find out. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then next weekend, on Thursday starts the Bear Valley Lectureship. So by the time this airs on Monday, the the Come Fill Your Cup retreat will already be over, but Bear Valley Lectures will be starting the following Thursday. And we'd love to see anybody that might want to come Thursday through Sunday. It looks like a really good theme Mm -hmm. this year. Psalms there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish we could go. I love the Bear Valley Lectureship. It's always a great uplifting weekend, beautiful Mm -hmm. setting, Mm -hmm. good singing. Lots of fellowship. The very first time we came was 2016. Well, John had come before, but in 2016, I remember was my first time. And I remember texting you and saying, should I bring boots or sandals? And you said, I mean, in my mind, I was thinking September in Colorado was going to be practically cold, you know, practically Mm -hmm. winter. And you, I remember you said, well, I've worn both in September sandals Mm -hmm. and boots. And, uh, I, but then we went up to Estes Park after the lectureship and the leaves were already changing and there's not anything. I don't, I haven't seen any hint of that yet. It's just, oh, okay. I guess maybe a later fall this year. I did see mm-hmm. some leaves falling when we were on the bike ride the other day, but, um, but no, you know, usually you can go down Sims and see the trees kind of starting to light up, lighten up and that's not happening yet. So hopefully we'll have some color for yeah, everybody you, when they come up. You don't get bored with the weather there. No, we've had lectureship where we're all in short sleeves and sandals and lectureships where we're in sweaters and boots. You just mm-hmm. never know which one it's going to be. Yeah, I haven't. Looked but it's always beautiful forecast. either way. Right. Yeah, it's definitely cooler than Texas. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, fun. Yeah. Well, What's I'll be praying, praying for you through all of that. That's all good stuff. But yeah. a lot of stuff also. Yeah, it's hectic, but it's good. Yeah. Hectic. Yeah. What's mm-hmm. going on there? Well, um, I thought I'd start out by talking about Neil's sense of humor because, you know, we've, uh, he's real proud of himself and we've entered into this farming cow thing. And mm-hmm. so we have a family group text going for some reason, one of the boys called our group, our family group text, Kentucky headhunters. I don't know why, but okay. that's the name of it. All right. And he, Neil sent a picture or said something in it and he put in there, hashtag milk duds. Because we've been having some issues with, you know, getting started mm-hmm. off with a cow and chasing it or milking problems. So he's been calling us hashtag milk duds. Did you say Dale is calling you that? No, Neil. Neil. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like he'll send a picture and write something. And then he put hashtag milk duds mm-hmm. yeah. talking about us. And then the other thing is he said that um, he put in there, Kathy's midlife crisis is a cow a sake. <laughs> brother <laughs> he's cracking himself up oh it's cute well but i, I kind of feel like we should have some theme music or something around here because there's always interesting things happening in the barn and the other day i was out there and i was <laughs> in co- in curlers i had hair curlers <laughs> and you know i'm squatting down under the cow washing her udder or whatever I was doing. And she flicked her tail around and the hair of her tail stuck in my hair curlers. (laughs) 
Green Acres. That's the I theme know. song I'm thinking of. Oh, so anyway, just all these little snapshots that are going to be forever memories, I'm sure. <laughs> well, speaking of his sense of humor, you know, we had, you know, this, we had our, our uh, cruise group Zoom meeting last night mm -hmm. and he texted me and I told you, I think he meant to send it to, to our group of four, but it came just to me. And he, he asked what kind of feedback we were getting. And, and uh, I, and I had said, I told him what you said to me afterwards about how the Zoom meeting was shorter than most of our podcasts. I, to I told that to Neil. I said our, that you said our Zoom meeting was shorter than most of our podcasts. And he said, that's not hard. Gone with the Wind is shorter than y'all's podcasts. <laughs> and then later on, he wrote another, just one word. He wrote back roots. So yeah, his sense of humor. Thanks, Neil. He's feeling his oats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. While the cow's eating her oats, he's feeling his oats. That's right. That's all right. And I've had successes and failures already with all my dairy ventures. I got this book on the creamery and I've already made some butter that turned out really good, but I've tried to make mozzarella twice now. And the first time it looked good, but it tasted real rubbery, mm. almost inedibly. So, and then I made another batch. Um, was that today or yesterday? And Oh, today. And, um, it wasn't rubbery, but it was still kind of squeaking, mm. you know, like you could hear it squeak, squeak when you were chewing on it and it tasted good. But so anyway, I'm still working my technique there and, and now I'm trying to make cottage cheese. Well, I'd like to come taste that. Well, I know I thought about you. I got to figure it out so I can have some for you when I see you. Well, how do you, how do you change the texture of mozzarella? I mean, is I it know. a length of know. time or? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've tried two different techniques. I've made mozzarella before with regular store-bought organic milk, and I had no issues whatsoever. And now yeah. I've tried twice with this raw milk, and I'm having texture issues. So I'm not sure yet. Well, squeaky do doesn't some... bother me. Yeah, I mean, it still tastes okay. I just don't. I want the texture to be right. So mm -hmm. anyway, practice makes perfect, hopefully. Mm -hmm. You still have two refrigerators full of milk. Oh, Yes. We sent two gallons, the, all the kids came over on Labor Day. We sent two gallons home with each of them. What are you storing it in? We, the milk itself. Yeah. Like, do you have gallon jugs and things or what? Ha half gallon canning jars, glass jars oh, is what okay. we put it in. And so I they bring them back to, to you. Yes. Yes. Took some to church Sunday night for some people. And you know how some people like it if there's a salesperson at church you don't want to be that person oh here she comes wanting to sell something I feel like I'm, that's going to be me with milk mm -hmm. you want some milk you want some more milk can I give you some milk they're going to be saying here comes the dairy queen again <laughs> at least you're giving it away you're not trying to sell something that's right that's right well last week you know we mentioned um or no wasn't last week whenever we talked about side hustles. And I said, Janelle mm -hmm. was making leather earrings, but I didn't know she yeah. was selling them yet. Yeah, she is. She's selling them in a local shop mm -hmm. in Tompkinsville and starting a little Etsy shop. So yeah. I wanted to I get can't that wait for that update. Etsy shop. They're really cute. Yeah. I love <laughs> those leather earrings too. Cause they're so light. Yes, They don't these are very light. Hang, you know, hold your ears down and I, don't, I can't stand heavy earrings. So mm -hmm. while I, I have heavy earrings on today. They're cute though. They look turquoise. That's all that matters, right? Mm -hmm. It's a good color combination with your raspberry colored shirt and your Thank turquoise you. earrings. You're welcome. Yeah. Glad you got that raspberry right. Well, for our listeners, before we hit record, I said, that is your color. That red shirt looks good on you. And you said raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it right. That's right. That's right. Oh. Hey, ask me if I went thrifting. Did you go thrifting, Kathy? <gasps> Did you find something? Yes. Okay. This is fun. We have a local shop here that's closing. That part's sad. But we went on their very last day. It's called the Village Keep. I've, we found pieces there that we brought into their home, our home and loved. It's like antiques and then furniture that the owner's taken and, and um, kind of upcycled, you know, or painted mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Well, so we went in there on their last day and there wasn't much left, but everything was majorly marked down. And we found the cutest little random thing. So if you're watching, have a little show and tell for you. Okay. 
Okay. So the first thing, look at this bowl. Oh, fun. Isn't that the cutest thing? And it's my very interesting lid. It kind of looks like Fiesta. It's not. There's nothing on the bottom. Hmm. There's no markings whatsoever. But I Is love it the color. ivory? It's kind of a salmon color. Okay. Like a textured salmon color. But she had these stickers <laughs> on everything. This was like a dollar. Oh, nice. And originally... It was $30 in mm -hmm. there. So that's how far down she had yeah. marked things by the time we went in. So we just went crazy. Look at this teeny tiny little basket. Aww. This little metal bas wire basket. Mm -hmm. I found all kinds of baskets of all different sizes. Mm -hmm. And one of them is big enough that I've put all my wooden cutting boards in it uh, in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and then I found this little amber pedestal bowl. Oh, that's pretty. It's got chocolate in it. for our Ooh, home Did library. it come with the chocolate? It did not come with the chocolate, but we put that in our home library and this little wire basket thing with handles. That looks like you could put strawberries or something in it. Yes. I, all kinds of possibilities. And I found a sculpture. See this? Oh. She's holding, it's a girl with a long dress holding her mm -hmm. hat like the wind's about to take it away. And it's an mm -hmm. Austin sculpture cool this is the most expensive thing we bought in there it was 25 dollars, but nice. it's worth like depending on where you find it about 200 dollars. wow and it's our first sculpture and she looks right at home on my piano so this is our bit of culture <laughs> and, i've never heard of austin sculptures well i know when we looked at it she said oh that's that's a good price that's an austin sculpture and i went oh really but i didn't know what that meant i had to go look it up you could and have then, said, oh, well, wow. Okay. Like you knew what you were talking about. And then check this out. That's an old fashioned coffee maker, huh? Well, like a drip. Yeah. when we, yes, when we first looked at that, we didn't think it was because there's no oh. holes in there, but there are, they're just so tiny. You can only see them if you hold it up to the light. There are okay. teeny tiny holes in there. So it is a coffee maker. It's called a dripolator. Hmm. 50s, and you huh? put the coffee in here inside this little kettle part uh -huh. and then you put this on top and it's got little measuring marks on it you pour your yeah. hot water in there and then it steeps through very 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 slowly mm. and so we've already made a pot of it it was fun and good it's more of a it's not very practical because it takes yeah. forever but uh -huh. it's kind of a novel fun thing but you don't have any coffee grounds in your coffee for sure Nope, you don't and then we found this humongous roasting pan one of those heavy duty ones with the big like steel handles on the side and it has mm -hmm. the, the roasting racks that are real heavy, two different sizes. Um, $10 nice. for that. So anyway, we found all kinds of fun stuff. You hit and the I jackpot. Thought, I feel like Carla Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Last year when, uh, when I was getting ready for a lectureship, I wanted, you were there. So you saw my little corner that had the snacks and things in it. And I wanted yes. it to look kind of vintagey, like 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. So I went looking so for, cute. well, and one of my things that I'm going to talk about today was on that table, but I went looking for an old kind of percolator like they used to use. Mm -hmm. And I found one that was on wooden lace, kind of like the one that you just showed mm -hmm. at that. Um, oh, what's that? The name of that antique store with the root beer bar in it. The, you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's called the antique something or other. Anyway, I found, I found a fun old, I don't know why it's fun to use old stuff like that, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good find. I like that. And you know how to display it to where it looks really good. Well, you make it look super cute. Thank you. I thrifted also, something fun. Unless oh wait, you're I'm in... not done. Okay, I also go. found two chairs for our dining room table. They're mismatched, wow. beautiful chairs, really gorgeous chairs. And then two lamps. One of them is huge. Um, and then we, I was going to put up in the library, but I actually like it down here in the living room. And we put one on either side of our couch. Can you so. spin the camera where I can see it? Um, oh, is see it the, that over there, yeah. that blue based? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That is a nice one. And they match? Yeah. Nope. Oh, okay. They're all mismatched. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mismatch no, is fun. Yes. Well, mine is something that maybe nobody but me would want and see if I can pick it up without dropping everything off of my table. It's a, it's a sewing basket. A sewing that you are so special. That's yeah. cute. But it's a heavy duty, like wooden. You can see the, um, where it's, I don't know, it's 
buckled together, mm -hmm. but on the inside it's padded. It's got padding so you can like oh. stick your pins in there. Anyway, I thought it was fun. This was like seven dollars, but that was that, that was design on it reminds me of that painting that was so popular in the early nineties. What mm -hmm. was that called? Like what total was it painting called? or something total like painting. that. Yes. yes. It does kind of look like that. And I mean it's it is kind of old fashioned looking, but but it's I like it, you know, and that's kind Cute. of what to me thrifting is you find stuff mm -hmm. that you like and Mm -hmm. And by the way, Micah texted me after the um, episode when you asked me what my design style was. He wrote me and he said, yes, Goodwill is your style. <laughs> so he agreed. And that is kind of something silly to be known for, but it's true. Well, I, I'm not good at it, but I love to bring things in that just have a story or they're old or, mm -hmm. you know, instead of going to target or right. somewhere like, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I mm -hmm. love bringing stuff in. that just is yeah. old. It has a history. Some yes. of those, like if you find yeah. old quilts, if you ever see an old quilt, mm -hmm. if especially I hate, I wouldn't want to sell them. And I have before I know, I, I think I told everybody that I sold those quilt tops last year sometime. But if you find an old antique quilt with, it has, a signature on it, those things are worth tons of money just oh. because it's kind of a proof that it was, it makes people's imagination start like who made this and mm -hmm. did they have a quilting bee and you know, what's the family story. And then if you can, if you can find the story behind it, it's worth even more. So wow. people like to know the history behind things. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. tip. I never check for signatures. Well, those are not you don't see those very often old antique quilts like that, especially that for a decent price. A lot of times they will be two or $300, but yeah. that's a little over my price range. Yeah. I like 15. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's better. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, do you have anything you want to share before we, I don't um, think so. You're keeping track of the time. Mm -hmm. All right. 17. 17. So that's mm -hmm. what I'll put. Okay. So we are talking, we're sharing some more favorite things. Mm -hmm. This will be the third time we've done this. And these are just, First of all, random things that we like. We're not trying to convince anybody to buy things. We've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. We are not sponsored. We're not affiliates. We're not profiting in any way from anything we're sharing. In fact, some of mine aren't even things you can buy. They're just mm -hmm. free okay. things. Um, we're just sharing things that we like. We think it's fun to talk about them. And we thought uh, some of y'all listening might be interested too. So that's all we're going to do. And I think we each have about seven things that we're mm -hmm. going to share and talk about and, and then we'll be done. Yep. Do you want to go first? I can. Okay. My first one is, it is one of those things that, uh, that you can't buy. And I started when we were, when you decided to do favorite things again, I thought maybe we could talk about, and we didn't, but maybe we could talk about things that we would grab if, there was a fire coming, you know, what is it in your home that is really precious to you that you might grab? Oh, you went sweet. Well, on this one, on yeah, this one, none of mine are grabby things. Okay. Well, the rest of mine are not either, but this one is, this is, it's a basket. If you're watching, you can see it's just, it's a longa burger bag that I found at Goodwill, but it's not the basket. That's what's uh, my favorite thing. It's the recipes that are inside. Oh. And that it's a mess. You can tell it's oh. a mess. But I have um, my mom for my wedding gave me a, a recipe box full of recipes that she had typed out. She she had written some, but most of them, if you're watching, you can see most of them were like this on index cards mm -hmm. that she typed. And then she put little stickers on them and, uh, and then she would write little notes on them like this was is this one is a recipe for orange Julius. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had one? They're good. So she has the recipe for it, but at the bottom she wrote, this will hurt painfully sensitive teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so I have lots of her recipes in here. There are a few that she hand wrote. Um, of course I can't find one right now because most of them are, here's one, Ruth Burkett's punch that she wrote. And Ruth Burkett was a friend of ours from San Marcos days when I was growing up, one of her daughters was a good friend of mine. So she hand wrote some, um, but, but a lot of these are not from her. In fact, I would say probably a third of them are from her. And then other ones are from friends over the years. 
and I guess it's just so special because I, when I look through it, there's, here's my one from my cousin, Jana, that has her handwriting, my sister-in-law, Karen, Karen's cheese ball. Um, there's Bobby Hyde and there's Lemma Knight and Francis O'Donnell and Carolyn Gully and Angela Smith. I mean, it's just like, it's like a history um, mm. of friendship over the years. And a lot of them came from does Neil do this? John brings home from gospel meetings. He always yes. brings home a recipe from somebody. He's he been does. over to their house and he wants mm-hmm. the recipe. And so he brings it home and, and he tells me, you've got to make this. This is the best, whatever. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it's just, it kind of gets junky in here because I use a recipe and then I set it on top. Like it's supposed to be filed under appetizers or biscuits or casseroles but I don't do that I just set it back on top and then I maybe once a year I'll pick the ones off the top and then file them again but anyway this is one of my absolute favorite things because it's just got a lot of memories attached to it and this goes back and forth with me from dripping to Denver all the time because I I don't want to leave something behind a recipe that I that I like to use but things like I used to make tea syrup have you ever heard of that I have never heard of that So it's, uh, my mom made it when I was growing up and it was, the recipe calls for a five pound bag of sugar and then a box of loose tea, which Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I hadn't made it, I would have never even known that, that it was, that existed like that because tea usually comes in a bag, you know, Mm -hmm. but uh, so you, you bring water to a boil and then you put the leaves in the water and let it steep for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And then you have to balance a a really fine um, sieve over the top of your sugar and pour the liquid from the tea over the sugar. And then you let that soak in and then you put more water on top of the tea leaves, bring it to a boil, let it steep for another 10 minutes. And then you pour that liquid over the top of the sugar. And then by then it's kind of starting to dissolve. You know, it's like a big sugar, you know, mass of sticky sugar. And by the third or fourth time that you steep and then pour over the top, you stir it and it's real thick. So then you have a syrup that when you want sweet tea, you just fill a glass full of water and ice. And then you pour like a tablespoon or two of the tea syrup in it and you've got sweet tea. And it was really, really good. And I made it for years until 2011 when we went on Weight Watchers and I realized I can't drink that much sugar. And so I just don't do sweet tea anymore unless it's artificially sweetened. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's my first favorite thing. It's my recipe box. We really are the same person. I have a recipe (laughs) box from when we were first married. And I sat down with my mom and my grandma before I got married. And we all hand wrote recipes of theirs. And so I have recipe cards in there that have both of their handwriting on them. And then Mm -hmm. my grandpa typed out a bunch of grandma's recipes on index cards. And it looks exactly like what yeah. you just showed me same must be the same typewriter mm-hmm. <laughs> minus the stickers it's and just fun so, but when I'm when I'm pulling them out and making recipes I do the same thing I never file them back I end up with this big stack right on top and every now and then I'll go through and make myself put them back where they go yeah <laughs> we should go through our recipe boxes and share share our favorites I mean I just there's so many memories mm-hmm. attached to these that I'm looking through and just I, I can even remember where like there's one banana pudding my mom used to make a like a um um what do you call it a custard where you cook it you know mm-hmm. janice john's mom would make banana pudding with jello pudding and um eagle brand milk and cool whip and i love that kind but mom made it she made a custard out of milk and eggs and cooked it and thickened it you know and so on this recipe, it's for banana pudding, but right underneath it says, remember Grady, because before John and I got married, I knew Grady loved banana pudding and I tried to make a banana pudding for him. And I used cheap vanilla wafers that were stale. <laughs> and uh, so when I put it all together, I thought he's going to be really impressed with me and he's going to think I'm the perfect woman for his son. And then he took one bite of it and he, he ribbed me for it the rest of his life, he ribbed me about how bad that banana pudding was. Oh, so no. memories. I think that's what I love about this is when I look at the mm-hmm. recipe and mom, mom has written, remember Grady. So that's cute. Yeah. It's well, fun. that's, you should have ended with that one. Oh, 
I, I mean, started it's pretty with much bed. downhill from here. Yeah, it really is. And when I'm looking at the rest of my favorite things, it really is downhill from here. I'm looking at my first one going, don't want to share. Just, uh, <laughs> so did I win? Who can, you won. Okay. We're done. We can just Thanks finish. for a good episode. Until next time. <laughs> Keep looking at <laughs> Okay, no. well, that was like, yeah, thanks for starting out with that. My first one is I won, no, I won. No, no memories attached to it whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> it's this Italian herb seasoning grinder. You can tell okay. it's almost gone for those mm-hmm. of you who are watching. Um, this is from Sam's. And it's just, it's right where they keep their sea salt grinder and their black pepper grinder. Have you tried this stuff? I was fixing to say, yeah, we are the same person because there's one of those in my cabinet. It is so if I good. could go get it, I would go get it. It's so in the bottle, it has dried garlic, salt, dried onion, spices, chili peppers, basil, oregano, rosemary, marjoram, thyme, and mm-hmm. sage, but it grinds it fresh mm-hmm. when you use it. So we put, we top our pizzas with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I put it in my green beans, roasted potatoes, spaghetti, I mean, sauce. spaghetti sauce, pretty much yep. anything. I use this stuff all the time and mm-hmm. I love it. So that's my first favorite thing. Italian Mine doesn't look exactly grinder. like that. It's ra- It doesn't have that square top, but it's Italian mm-hmm. seasoning with a grinder. And I got it at either Costco or Sam's. I can't remember which. Yeah, this is the Sam's version of it. But. Yeah, good mm-hmm. stuff. So that goes yeah. with my recipe box. Yes, it does. My grandma used to use an Italian seasoning grinder. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and that's her bottle. <laughs> What's your second one? My second one is, it's a pampered chef tool and I don't even know what to call it, but it is, do you have one? It's a razor blade. Well, there is a really sharp thing in it. It, If you are watching, you can see it's for corn. I do Do not have one of those. So when you, um, do you like corn on the cob? I love corn. Do you cut it off? No. Well, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but I like to make Especially this time of year, when we come back to Denver, they have the Olathe or Olathe corn, Kansas. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is it Olathe? I don't know. I don't know. Whichever one. But it's fresh corn from mm-hmm. Kansas. And so it's like six for a dollar this time of year. But I like to make homemade cream corn with it. Yes, and to do okay. that, you cut it off the off yeah. the cob. So if you can see, it's got it's got a sharp edge. But it's curved, so when you when you're going to cut your kernels off the corn, you you just hold it, you know, with the ear in the bowl, and then you can slice down all down the side of the corn, and it it doesn't just cut the the kernels off the cob, but it slices them, which you want to do to get the liquid out of the corn to mm-hmm. make the cream corn, mm-hmm. and um, it just cut. When I used to make it before I had this tool, I just noticed that it still got some some <laughs> hair on it didn't c- clean it too well last time I guess um but I used to have to take each kernel of corn and slice the kernels each row of kernels with a knife so how you know 25 or 30 rows of kernels have to slice down the side and then cut them off and then scrape them to get all the meat or whatever you call it out and so this just really cuts down on on the time and maybe that's a kind of a silly tool but it has it's something that's unique and I have enjoyed oh. using it and I just got it last year but it's from paper chef I do cut for some reason when you asked me that I was thinking about like when you're eating corn on the cob do you mm-hmm. eat it off the cob or do you cut it off the cob my sister mm-hmm. cuts hers off the cob but yeah we do the same thing we make cream corn to freeze mm-hmm. we use Joyce Johnson's recipe it is so good but mm. I'm using the knife to cut yeah. it all and then to scrape the milk off the cob yeah. and yeah, you need one of these. Yeah, I do. And also corn salads, which are good in the summertime mm. too, with dill and yes. lime juice and mm. stuff like that. It's really good. So hamburger chef corn scraper thing. Yeah, that's okay. the very technical term for it. Oh, fun one. Mm-hmm. All right. So are you done? Yep. Okay. My next one is this Thunder Wonders Calming Chews for Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I do not take this myself. Well, but Ollie in his old age, he's eight years old now, has developed a fear of thunderstorms. He has always been fearless. We've called him Mighty Mouse for years because he's not afraid of anything. And all of a sudden, if it thunders, he starts shaking all 
over and wants to be in my face hmm. and just pressing up against me, shaking, he'll start panting. And, um, or if he hears a gunshot in the distance from somebody hunting, um, when the guys were building the barn, they were using nail guns. Mm -hmm. He reacted the same way. So he's just mm -hmm. developed this fear. Well, Neil mentioned it in a sermon. I don't even know why. <laughs> I can't remember what it had to do with anything. But he mentioned in a sermon, Ollie's new fear of thunderstorms. And um, uh, the Medlands came up and told me about this stuff. And um, so I was a little bit nervous because I thought, what is in here? You know, but I... CBD looked, oil for dogs. Probably, probably. No, it's chamomile and passion flower and ginger and melatonin. Oh. But so I gave him... When and a little get, splash of Benadryl. Yeah, we get lots of thunderstorms here. So I gave him half of one. Mm -hmm. And in just a few minutes, he stopped shaking. And huh. it just, it did. It just kind of made him like relaxed and chill and wow. and all that. And so we had another big storm come along last night. And sure enough, you know, thunder, lightning flashing. He runs to me. He starts shaking. I gave him half of one of these and he just calmed right down. So I wonder what would happen if you gave him a whole one. Well, I was looking at the weight and it says that they're for 25 pounds and he's a 10 pound mm -hmm. dog. So that's why I gave him half of one. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's effective. I wouldn't want to know Dylan how he would respond if I gave him a whole one, but. He'd thunder, sleep out in the yard in a thunderstorm. <laughs> thunder, wonder, calming cheese for dogs. And it says you can use it for thunder, fireworks, separation, anxiety, travel, or if they're going to get groomed and they have a hard time with that. So. Promotes, Where do you get it? I ordered it online, mm. Amazon, I think, okay. but this is the brand they recommended and it's really good. Good to know. I know people yeah. that their dogs, uh, they've used like a weighted blanket mm -hmm. when a thunderstorm comes or, mm -hmm. and they hate any holiday that has fireworks, fireworks because of that. So especially since it's never just on the 4th of July, it's yeah. three yeah, or four exactly. days leading up and three or four days mm -hmm. <laughs> on the back. And it end. will be in the, if, like, if it's anything like at home, it'll be midnight all of a midnight. sudden. Yes. Why yeah. do we wait until midnight to do that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Oh, okay. That's yours. My, my next one is um, a little bit embarrassing to recommend, but Good. for those of you who have roots that you need to touch up, this Clairol, if you can see it, if you're mm -hmm. watching, you can see it. Clairol root touch up spray. Mm -hmm. And I, before I started coloring my hair, I did not know that this was made. I had no idea people could use this, but, um, so when your roots start growing out and I've got dark hair, so they show really, really quickly when I, it just looks like I have a really wide part for a while. And then it starts getting wider and wider, but it, um, you can get different colors. I just use the medium brown, but you can get dark brown. You can get dark blonde, um, whatever your natural color is, but it, um, it covers up your roots. So you don't have that skunk stripe. And this one, I used to use the one in the blue can, which I think is L'Oreal. And it felt more like a just spray paint kind of. And one time I remember that I, I would take my glasses, I, I used it and I would take my glasses off and put them on top of my head. So when I'm talking to someone right next to them, I, it's like, you're right here in my face. So I have to take my glasses off. And so when I put them on top of my head and then I put my glasses back on, when I set them on my nose, I noticed that John was looking at me funny when I took my glasses off the next time. And he was going, you know, given that universal signal for you've got something on your nose, like rubbing his nose and looking at me. And it had come off on, on my note, on my glasses, the spray for my head. So I was <laughs> transferring it onto the bridge of my nose. Anyway, this one doesn't do that. It says color and volume two in one spray. So, um, it, you spray it and it covers up your roots temporarily, of course, cause it washes out, but it also is kind of like, it kind of gives the texture of a mousse. So mm -hmm. it gives you a little bit more body in your hair more so than just the one that I used to use. So Anyway, it's, um, like I said, temporary, you, it washes out, but it's a good thing to kind of go in between coloring. If you're, mm -hmm. if you color your hair, especially if your hair grows fast mm -hmm. yeah. and mine does, and mine mm -hmm. does. And I asked, so T why it always seems to fade right here at my temples faster. And I didn't know if my hair was growing faster there. And she said, well, it's probably because you wash your face. 
and um, it takes that color out a little bit faster than other areas in your hair. So hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Good. Very practical. Next. Very practical. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'm very excited about this next one. It's Good. an app and it's free. Mm -hmm. And Dale introduced it to me um, the other day. It's called Bible Map. Do you have that one? Mm -mm. Does your John Moore husband have that one? He does not that I know of. Bible it, map. Bible map. It is so cool. So what it does is when you pull it up and you open up any text in the Bible, any geographical location, and even place like a, a certain building, you know, that they'll mention by name, um, above it is a map. And as you hit that, it'll highlight it on the map. So when you're reading about these geographical locations, Jerusalem, Syria, or, you know, Samaria or anything like that, it'll highlight it for you on the map. Wow. Then you can hit the little I for information next to that highlighted place on the map, and it'll pull up pictures of it, modern day pictures if they have them, and then also information about that place. And... For your map selection, you can do a traditional map, which looks like something that you might, you know, hang up in a classroom, or you can do satellite map, or um, a mixture of both, which wow. will have the names of all the places on there, plus it's a satellite view that you can zoom in on. So um, I'm really, really interested in geography, but I'm very also very weak in geography, and especially like learning it and then remembering it. So I love this. I'm so excited. And anytime John is going to go nuts. Yes. Anytime you're studying any part of the Bible and any geographical location or place comes up, you can have it right there in front of you. It's so cool. And Bible it downloads really app. fast. I just downloaded it. Yep. And it's free. So, so you can you, I'm looking, okay. You can go to a certain, like you can go to Ruth chapter one. Mm -hmm. and then tap on Moab oh. and it shows you where Moab is. Yes. So it highlights, I'm sure you said all this, but I was busy downloading it. So it highlights all of the, <laughs> <laughs> all of the locations that are in the chapter. Yes. This is super cool. So mine's open to Ax one. I don't know uh -huh. if people that are watching can really see that or if the screen's mm -hmm. giving it a glare and it's got Jerusalem in red, Israel, Samaria, Galilee, the Mount called Olivet, the upper room even. Wow. And so when I touch any of those, it zooms in on it on the map. And then there's a little eye in a blue circle next to it. And I hit that and it pulls up picture, modern day pictures of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And then underneath with um, 13 pictures, more pictures that I can look at. And then all this information about Jerusalem and other References in the Bible, geology, climate. Um, I mean, it just goes on and on. So it's fantastic. We could use this on the cruise. Yes, we can. Looking at Cyprus. Yes, we Well, can. you didn't know it, but you just made John's week. Because <laughs> it's something that he can tell the students about. And, but you know, it makes it real too. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you and I know it's real, but, mm -hmm. but when you see it in the Bible and then you can tap on it and see exactly where it is. Like when you're studying about Ephesus, well, where exactly is that? And how close is it to Thessalonica and how close is that to Rome? That's very, very cool. Well, and I love how the Bible text is right below it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're, if you run across Jerusalem or Cyprus or something, you click on that and you read about it. And then later on in the Bible, you know, you might want to click on it again to refresh your memory. How many times will it take for you to do that to actually start remembering things right. about these locations that you're reading about? And to me, that will just enhance your study and help you envision it better or put yourself there. Or, you know, I, I thought that was great. I was really excited. As soon as Dale told me about it, I said, put that on my phone right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just typed in Acts 17 and then it pulled up I'm assuming all of the, like on the little map above it has little pins and all mm -hmm. of the different locations that are in Acts 17. So mm -hmm. you can see how close together they all are or far apart, if you want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. But did you see where you can change the different map styles? Where do you do that? Um, go to, no, not there, not there. Uh. I had to play with it. I was playing with it. 
So earlier. the columns, there's scripture and then there's locations and then there's artifacts and then there's mm-hmm. major Bible events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. Well, maybe I need to remember that we're recording a podcast right now and quit playing with my phone, but that's yeah, super I'll, cool. I'll figure that out and share it with you later, but yeah. that's my, that's my next one. What's your next one? Okay. You win. That's, that's the coolest. Oh, yay. Yeah. Okay. My next one is a thing that um, may sound like I'm I'm not selling it at all, but I know you can find it and you probably have your own kind, but it's tea tree oil. Mm-hmm. And this one happens to be doTERRA, doTERRA. I don't know how to say it, mm-hmm. but I have used Melaleuca's tea tree oil. The one, what is the one that you use? The brand Revive. that you use? Revive. I'm sure yeah. they have tea tree in fact, you know, I started out with 10 things on my list and you said mm-hmm. you only had seven. So I crossed mine off. I had revive essential yeah. oils down there. Yeah. That I crossed well, off. you turned me onto that too, because I got some of the, I did get that hand sanitizer that you mm-hmm. said was like the one that I used before. Anyway, um, tea tree, it actually says Melaleuca. So I guess that's the name of the tree. I'm pretty sure it's the name of the tree that you get tea tree oil, but this has a very strong smell which I like my Mm -hmm. mom does not like it um but back when my kids were in high school one of them in particular always had an issue with like staph infections Mm -hmm. which were I don't know if the word right word is rampant but they were rampant in the locker rooms Mm -hmm. and I, I imagine they probably still are in fact they might even be more serious now because it seems like um, things are kind of harder to control antibiotic wise mm-hmm. these days, but, um, I would just, whenever I would start seeing a little sign of one of those infections coming on, I'd just get a cotton ball and put some melaleuca or tea tree oil on it and cover it maybe with a band aid, and it knocked it out, which mm-hmm. is a pretty big deal because staph infections can be serious. And I know that that might not necessarily work with everyone, but I mean, I've got a bandaid on my finger right now because I, I had a, I got a, a thorn from some kind of a something out at the retreat last weekend. And I guess I didn't get it all out and it started looking like it was getting infected. Mm. This is kind of gross. Sorry. But, um, but I, I put some of the tea tree oil on it and I can tell that it's, it's going away, but it, I think it works for different kinds of <laughs> you're not going to like this, but <laughs> toenail stuff and, um, <laughs> It's just, it, I don't know what it is about it. I really don't understand what it is, but it, it helps to, to clear up um, staph infections. It helps to clear up really any kind of infection. There was one time I remember that he, um, he went to a retreat, a youth retreat. And I remember there was something on his arm and I was kind of a little bit worried about it. So I drew a line around it mm-hmm. to kind of see where it was. And by that night, it was, it was extended, you know, the red area had extended mm-hmm. beyond the line. So he ended up coming mm-hmm. home and we, um, I, I guess maybe I should have put the tea tree oil on it, but I didn't. So anyway, I'm just saying that this, this is good stuff and it, it might help different things that other people have going on. So I thought it would be good to just mention it because it's been helpful mm-hmm. to us over the years. And I know you can get it, you can get it at the drugstore. I don't know the purity, you know, if it's better to get it from a uh, essential oil company, yes. but all of you them. Wanna, it. I think you want to look for a therapeutic grade. Okay. Does uh, it say on the bottle? Yeah. Therapeutic grade mm-hmm. CPTG certified pure therapeutic grade. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Um, it's just, it's not, it's pure. It's not diluted in any way. Some companies will say pure essential oils, but it's not, it's not really. Um, so you want to look for those words, therapeutic grade, but, um, the, I made boo-boo bomb for our farm stand with yarrow and I included tea tree oil in it and it's for rashes, cuts, burns, bites, Mm -hmm. things like that. But I put tea tree oil in that too. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah. It says that this was for aromatic or topical use. You can diffuse it aromatically or apply topically dilute with a carrier oil to minimize skin sensitivity, but I never did do that. I just mm-hmm. put it, it lasts forever because it is a teeny tiny little hole and I just put it on a cotton ball and tape it down. Yeah, anyway. that's good stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, my next one is, have you ever heard of a thermal label maker? I think so, but I don't know what it is. So Janelle told me about this one because I've been needing something to put on my, my jams and products that I'm making for the farm stand, but I didn't want to have to go, I didn't want to have to order expensive labels. I didn't want to be buying ink all the mm-hmm. time. So she found this thing and it's a thermal label maker. So it doesn't use ink or ribbon or anything like that. And so, and it comes with, um, it comes with a small size label and then you can order bigger size labels, which is what I did. So you can use this for labeling anything that you want to sell, but also if you're doing something that needs a barcode on it, or if you just want to do address labels or pretty much anything. And so, but it's Bluetooth. So I can hook it up to my phone and then it comes with all these designs. So I can come up with, um, I think I brought, here's a little example. See, I put that little, um, a little closer outline yeah that's the very okay. first one i mm-hmm. played with but you can okay. change the fonts um you can come up with outlines you can do if you do a logo or an emblem or something you can put it on there and you can store your designs and things on your phone so anyway how, if this, it doesn't have ink how, to, how does it print i don't know how it does it it's thermal somehow i don't know what that means but it's I wonderful i don't either i'd have to look into it but do you have really, to there's no replacement cartridge for anything to. No, all you do is buy your label stickers and it Must comes on a roll. It comes on a roll that, yeah, you comes on a roll that you just stick in there and they're not expensive at all. The replacement rolls of different sizes are not expensive. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank you. Oh, the brand is, I don't know how to pronounce it. It looks like Fomimo. <laughs> P-H-O-M-E-M-O, Fomemo, Fomemo, I don't know, but you're watching there. Fomemo, Fomemo. Fomemo. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, is that it? Mm-hmm. All right. My next one is a game. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's right up your alley. And I know you played it. It's just Bananagrams. Oh, I love that game. And this is coming on the cruise with us because it's oh, packable. Good. Yeah. Yes. So I had never played it until um, maybe a month or so ago. And so it's basically you're playing Scrabble with yourself, sort of. You're making, you get, depending on how many people are sitting around the table, you probably know how to play this better than I do. But depending on how many people are playing, you get a certain number of tiles out of the, out of the pile. You keep them face down. So I think it's, if it's like four to six people, you get each get 15 tiles to begin with. And then the rest are in the center. And then when everyone is ready and the tiles are still face down, you say split. And then everybody turns over their tiles. And so you start making words. And, you know, you can diagonally, um, horizontally, vertically connect them that way. And uh, then as soon as you have created words with all of your tiles, then you say peel. And everyone has to draw another tile. And so you keep creating words. And sometimes, you know, you can just be going peel, 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 because you you're mm-hmm. maybe you have a, an I already in the stack and you can put an H next to it and make the word high. But you keep on peeling until all of the tiles are used up. And, and the first person that uses them all up with and has all of the words says bananas or something like that. And then everyone checks your words. And then so if you win that one, then um, then you scrabble them all up again. And it's just a word game. And I like word games. And it's it's a uh, small and I just I like it. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's perfect for travel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We describe that as um, scrabble on steroids. OK, <laughs> <laughs> well, that works, too. Yeah, it's, it's all about speed. Yeah, you have to think fast, build fast, work fast. And if you if you're the one that still has six or seven tiles you're trying to place and somebody else is going peel, 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 peel. <laughs> it's, it's frustrating. Frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fun. We played it this weekend at the staff retreat with C. Lynn, uh, Rhonda Greenway, um, Nancy Ballard, Kim Kazarjan, and one other person. And Nancy Ballard just beat the pants off of all of us. Hmm. And she was just so calm. Then she would just say, peel, peel. And, you know, if I'm doing it, I'm like, peel, peel. Because <laughs> you get more excited as you go. Are you but good at it? 
I think so. So Mm -hmm. challenge. No, my sister needs to challenge you. My sister's the best. Any word game. I mean, it's not like she's good at it. She's crazy good at it. Any word game. She blows every, I consider myself pretty good at that game. Mm -hmm. And she, she will blow you out of the water. Well, you have to know all of those little Scrabble words like QI she does. She or does. QAT or mm-hmm. J-O. You know, those are words that you can play in Scrabble, but most people don't know them. And I really don't know what they mean, but I know they're words. Yeah. So I if wish. you if you put a word down that does not is not a word and you get challenged, then if you then you lose and you have to put all of your tiles back in the center and mix them up and everyone else keeps keeps playing. Right. Mm-hmm. Is that I the way you know. play it? I don't, you I never lose, so, so you I've don't never. know. Well, you're going to lose on the cruise. Oh, I'm going to lose on the cruise. You're going to lose on the cruise because I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Challenge I'm accepted. have to eat my words. Challenge accepted. All right. Good thing I'm not competitive. Not at all. <laughs> okay. So my next one, I'm having second guesses now that I'm actually here Okay. about sharing this because it's a book. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last, I haven't read it all the way through and the last time I did that publicly, mm-hmm. I ended up having to retract because then I started running across some things that weren't great. So Uh-oh. I was like, about that book, I recommend it. Ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but I'm kind of fascinated by this idea of colors that, um, you know how they used to do seasons? Like, are you a warm, are you a spring, mm-hmm. summer, or fall or winter? Color wheel stuff. Yeah, I've always been kind of fascinated about that kind of stuff anyway. Well, this one is called Color Your Style. The subtitle is How to Wear Your True Colors, and it's by David Zyla, Z-Y-L-A. But it's a little bit different because he talks about um, breaking down different types of colors based on the kind of impression you want to give people, and it usually suits your specific situations or job. For Mm -hmm. instance, for people in ministry, um, there's a color that's your essence color and it's basically your shade of white. You know, not everybody needs to be wearing a pure white and it has to do with your skin tone. Um, you know, this book helps you determine which is your shade of white, but when you wear that color, um, that's your vulnerability color where you're letting people, it's basically your way of saying, I'm not putting up any barriers. I'm naked, you know, not, not in a sexual way, but I'm just not. <laughs> I'm not, oh, this just went south. <laughs> we don't use that word on this podcast. Not, but you know, I'm not, I'm being vulnerable and open and honest with you. That's what I'm, stop it. Cause you are not helping me at all. Quit yes. your, <laughs> I'm just enjoying watching you dig out of that hole. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Anyways. That's your essence color. So if you're, if you're, if somebody's coming in for counseling, which I know you do quite often, Mm -hmm. you would wear your shade of white. Stop it, Carla. (laughs) Your essence color, because it would help. (laughs) (laughs) Trying not to, and I'm tired. And so things are funnier when I'm tired. I'm trying to say something important. You're trying to be vulnerable. No, I'm not, but it would help them. Open up to you. It's supposed to help them open up to you better. And and then there's colors in here that um, it's like your your shade of black, your shade of khaki. Um, your how do you red. know what what is the right shade? Well, he tells you in here, and it has to. You know how a lot of things are have to do with your. Um, are you blue toned, or you know, do you have pink undertones? Well, this one is more along the things like you look in your eye. And what is the darkest color that you see? Because hardly anybody's eyes are just one straight color. If you look really closely, you have multiple, like two or three colors in your eye. What is the darkest shade in your eye? Um, Not counting the ring around your eye because that's something different. And then, you know, and he'll say that is your shade of brown that you're supposed to wear or whatever. Well, actually that one's from your hair. And then the ring around your eye is your shade of black. And some people don't need to be wearing black. If the ring around your eye is a charcoal gray, that's your shade of black. Hmm. Or if it's an olive, a dark, like a grayish olive green, that's your shade of black, you know? So 
it's all different kinds of things like that, but he breaks it down into, um, you have an energy color, you know, if you need a pick me up or if you're wanting to bring in energy to a board meeting, for instance, you know, he gives examples like that. You have a tranquil color. If somebody has been through something traumatic and you're trying to comfort them, um, there are things that can help with that. Like based on what colors you wear, I just think it's really, really fascinating. Mm. So anyway, that's, that's what this book is about. So, I wish yeah. I could read books like that. But you can't. I, I, I can't. I, oh. I, I, just, I don't know why, but I, I lose, I don't know. I want fiction. That's just, I'm a fiction reader. Well, if you was... prefer to watch a video, somebody did a YouTube video on it. That's how I first mm -hmm. ran across it. Yeah. That kind of well, breaks it all down and how it works. And... I think I remember you talking about a, some other color wheel thing that you did. Maybe it was a season thing mm -hmm. earlier years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's a little bit different, but it's really interesting. I usually just let John say, I like that color on you, and then I'm good. Whatever. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm, oh, that's okay. I got, it, got my giggle out of me. Okay, my next one is something pretty simple. It's just, this is what I wash my face with. It's just baby, baby dove. dove. Yeah. Hmm. And it's just, um, it's nothing special at all, and it's not expensive. I mean, it's not cheap. It's like six or $7 for this size bottle, mm -hmm. but, um, but it, it's just, it smells good. And I feel like it's not anything that, um, I don't know. I don't, I just haven't, I saw a meme the other day that no, Michelle Massey sent it to me that had a pair of Horachi sandals. Remember those it may have been mm -hmm. a little before your time. Mm -hmm. Horachi, Horachi sandals spelled H U A R A C H E. And she's the meme said, if you remember what these are, it's time for night serum. <laughs> so, but I don't do any of that and I probably should, but this, I just feel like it. I, when I wash my face with it, I feel like my, my face is clean. And, um, and then I also have it when the kids come and they can take, like, I can use this to, it's a, it's just a baby wash. So anyway, I know that's not fascinating or anything, but it's one of my mm -hmm favorite things because I, I bought it over and over again. And, and it's something that I use every day. So I thought maybe people might want to try it. Well, whatever you're doing, just keep on doing it. Whatever you're not doing, just keep on doing it. You have great skin. You have very Thanks. useful skin. It's because you're seeing me from a, across the is that what radio is? waves or whatever it is. Well, I see you in person also sometimes. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, my next one is, I didn't bring it to, over here to show you, but it's my blender because mm -hmm. you know how, you probably you probably have one of those fancy Vitamix blenders that you found I at don't. Goodwill. No, I have a KitchenAid though, but not oh, a Vitamix okay. now. Well, you know how they're very expensive, mm -hmm. but they pulverize and juice anything. Well, I found one that's pretty close and it wasn't very expensive. And the brand is called, it looks, <laughs> looks like home geek h-o-m <clears throat> excuse me well there i go lasted so long h-o-m-g-e-e-k it's one word home geek i guess that's how you pronounce it but um when i make tomato sauce i don't want to have to bother with seeding them or peeling a tomatoes or anything like that and so usually i'll roast them and then throw it in this blender with you know, garlic and basil, olive oil, things like that. And it just pulverizes everything. And mm. I've tried using a food processor, a regular blender, even an immersion blender, and it will not break up those tomato seeds. Like you can mm -hmm. still feel the texture and I can throw anything frozen and ice in my smoothie. Um, this kind makes the soups, like the hot soups and things like that too. Best so, stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, I thought I'd share that in case somebody else is also looking for a powerful blender, but doesn't want to throw out the big bucks for the Vitamix. It's the Hum Geek blender. How did you find it? I, I looked online. I just started researching powerful blender and I looked up one that had a lot of really good reviews and was in my budget. And then I ordered it and I've been very happy with it. I use it for everything. Hmm. So how do you roast a tomato? In the oven. I, when I get a bunch of tomatoes enough to fill a baking sheet, I spread them out in a single layer, drizzle it with a little olive oil, stick it in the oven at 425 and roast it for an hour. And that releases most of the juices. So then you just lift up the tomatoes, the pulp, 
part and stick it in the blender with whatever flavors you want and whir it up. And then you I pour can. it. Mm. Wow. I mean, oh, <laughs> when I cut them up, you know, I'll cut out that little top piece, but I don't like dig out the core or mm -hmm. anything. Hmm. Well, I've just never done that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Let's, do you have, you've done one more, right? I have one more. Yeah. Okay. And mine are vintage tablecloths. Oh, that I are love fun vintage to tablecloths. Yeah. Yes. Here's one of them. That I, oh, this is my favorite one. That's beautiful. It's just, it feels like linen. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it things. is, but it feels like linen. It may just be cotton, but it's, you know, just fun colors. Mm -hmm. And this one is not my favorite, but it's, I still like it. It's the same texture material, mm -hmm. but it's got those vintage colors. And I like to, like when we did that, um, I think I told y'all about the date night that we did on our deck last year mm -hmm. with um, different couples and I put everyone at a different table. So I went looking for some of these. And if you go to an antique store, you're going to pay more because they know they're antique, but sometimes you can find them pretty often. You can find them at a Goodwill or an art thrift store or something like that. And it'll be $2.99, but those are just fun. Um, if you've got like lots of different tables that you need a tablecloth on, and I don't use tablecloths very much only for mm -hmm. special things. And, uh, but you can have kind of like you were talking about with your uh, mismatched chairs and things mm -hmm. but it's fun to have mismatched tablecloths but they mm -hmm. still have the same kind of vibe to them which is the vintage 50s yes. and 60s look that I love I'm always and, drawn to those yeah yeah and they they wash nicely and and I don't really even iron them I just toss them in the dryer I'll use your ice cube trick and <laughs> press them in the dryer like that so mm -hmm. nice. I love looking for those and that's one of the things I always go to the textile section at a thrift store and just to see what they have. I saw a bunch of handkerchiefs the other day that were vintage and those are fun too. Um, they, some of them that are not in very good shape, you don't really want to think about, you know, it's a handkerchief nah, people yeah. blew their nose into, but, but there's some <laughs> like when, when, um, when Jordan and Aaron got married, my friend Carol gave me a vintage hanky and, you know, kind of the mother of the groom kind of thing to carry. Aww in case there were tears, which there were. And I've done that a few times with friends, giving them vintage hankies for their kids' weddings. So anyway, that's mm. my, that's my last one. That's a sweet one. Mm -hmm. My last one also is not sweet. Um, it's PJs okay. from Costco. Uh, <laughs> they have this, and I, I can't do show and tell because they're in the dirty clothes. Okay. But um, they're long pants, short sleeve tops. It's a two piece. Mm -hmm. Long pants, short sleeve tops. They're super, super soft and they have pockets in the pants. The pockets. We all need and pockets. Yes. And they're inexpensive. And the brand is Flora. That's the first word. And the last, the second word is Nick Cruz. I've heard of that. Yeah. Have you? N I K R O O Z. Mm -hmm. And so I bought one set when we were in Costco just because they felt so soft and comfortable and tried them and loved them. And so the next time we went back, there's like three different patterns and you can get them online too. But the next time I went back, I got another set because I mm -hmm. liked them so much, but Neil likes them too. <laughs> he thinks they're really cute and soft. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, but anyway, I'll, you know, there's nothing better than a good set of PJs. So mm -hmm. that's my, that's my last one. I wonder if those are seasonal or if you can always get them there. They may be seasonal. I don't know. Because since they're short sleeves, but I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, fun. Do yeah. you have any runners up or anything? Well, I did have some extra ones on here. Let me see if I want to scratch out. Because I have one runner up that I can use if you want to get one more. Um. Okay. Well, I was going to mention the chocolate covered gingerbread cookie folk from Trader Joe's. Ooh. And Trader Joe's has the coolest snacks and things. Yes, they do. And I, Holly Steves introduced me to these last year at a party and they were so, so good that I went online, but Trader Joe's doesn't share any of their stuff online. I don't know if you knew that or not. Mm -mm, I didn't. You have to go into their store and um, we don't have one here. So we have to go all the way to Nashville and they were out. So that's the reason I'm mentioning this now, even though it's only September you want to be watching for those things and you want to grab them when you see them. Because so it's just apparently, Christmas? Yes, it's a holiday thing. Apparently it is a cult favorite. What's it called? And they're again? called chocolate covered gingerbread cookie folk. 
but covered. the gingerbread part on the inside is kind of soft and almost has, I don't really know how to describe it, but almost has like a hint of orange spice. And when I first saw them, I just got them because they were cute, you know, this little chocolate dipped thing. Mm -hmm. And I took one bite and I thought, what in the world? They were so good. And so anyway, I'm keeping my eye open, open early this year to stock up on them when I find them. But mm. Mm -hmm. that Very sounds really good. I love, I love gingerbread. John's mm -hmm. not a big gingerbread eater. But neither I is like Neil. the cake gingerbread. Mm -hmm. I like gingerbread cookies. I do too. Oh, I do too. And neither is Neil. But I found a recipe that's supposed to be similar to these things. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and see if I can make them. But mm, that that's, sounds my, delicious. that's my honorable mention. What's your honorable mention? Okay. My honorable mention is another game. And I, <laughs> I texted you about it mm -hmm. and we played it at the retreat. It's called Ransom Notes. Oh, it's a little box. Yeah, it's a small box. Mm -hmm. okay. It's still pretty heavy, though, because it's got mm -hmm. a big, um, like, four decks of cards in it. But it is, um, so you just draw a card from the stack. And mm -hmm. then everyone has, like, a handful of magnetic tiles, like the kind that you can put on the refrigerator, you know, that mm -hmm. they have words. Everyone yeah. gets a little small square black. It looks like a teeny tiny cookie sheet. And then everybody gets a handful of the, the magnetic tiles and you spread them out in front of you. And then someone draws a card and reads what's on the card. And you have to make a sentence with your magnetic tiles that answers what the card says. Like, for example, in the back of the box, it says, ask a child in the airplane seat behind you to stop kicking. So then you have to look at all of your handful of tiles, which is probably about, I don't know, 75 tiles little tiny things and you have to make a sentence or a couple of sentences out of those words. So like on the back of the box, someone put this sentence together, young man, why foot enemy? I suffer. <laughs> so it was funny. I have to say it wasn't hilarious. We didn't come, it, it, we played it at the retreat and some of us could come up with some really fun things and others. Mm -hmm. You're like, I have no idea. Cause you only have like, 90, 90 seconds. Oh no. To me, I would think maybe make it two and a half minutes to give you a little mm -hmm. bit more time to look through what you have and to make, to put it together better, but it's just such a unique idea. And, um, and some of them are really funny and, and some of them you have absolutely no words that fit. And so you try to put them together and, and it's funny. So anyway, that would be my, my, um, my runner up. Did you have to remove any of the cards? Yeah, we did. Okay. Cause I, you. when you sent me that, I looked it up and, and, um, one of the descriptions said that not family friendly, like if you want it to be family friendly, you have to remove some cards. Mm. And so I was just wondering, what did they mean by that? Like yeah. three or four cards or half of the cards? Well, or... we didn't look through all of them. So I'm sure there's probably some more cause there's four, like four decks of cards, Wow. like, like the kind about the size that you would play a deck of cards. So there'd and, be plenty of playable oh yeah. cards. Oh yeah. yeah. And we fun. took out, we took out probably 10 words and there may be some more in there that we didn't come across, but mm -hmm. so probably two or three times we'll play it before we get everything out that needs to come out. But mm -hmm. it, it was fun. Okay. Yeah. And how many people can play at one time? Um, probably quite a few. It doesn't, um, three to six players. Okay. It says age is 15 plus. That's probably because there's a few things in there that need to come out mm -hmm. and it takes 30 to 90 minutes to, to play a whole game. I mean, you can play as long as you want. And so the way that you win is, um, so one person draws the card and reads it. Everybody makes their sentence. And then on one corner of the box that it says judge, and you spin the box and whoever the box points at what's it, that says judge, that person has to be the judge of, of all of the different sentences that are oh, read. Okay. And sometimes you may want to pick your own, but mm. if you do pick your own, then everyone has to agree that yours is the best or you get, <laughs> you lose. And so, I mean, it's, there's so many games out there and you think how in the world can you come up with another game that um, that's fun and unique and clean and all that. But this one, I think it'll, I think it'll be fun. You shared two games. I know. You're, you're becoming a game person. You're rubbing off on me. You've changed. 
in a good way, right? That's right. <laughs> well, that was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. I always, I love hearing what you like, and I'm usually making my little list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got <laughs> I can my be list just of like things. you. That Bible map thing, seriously, is, that's a game changer. I mean, that's mm -hmm. something that I, I wonder, do you know, do you have to have Wi-Fi to use it or is it that I don't know yet because I'm just wondering if we can use that out you know when we're in mm -hmm. Israel or wherever yeah I, maybe it, it maybe like... it just downloads and you have all that information already yeah, yeah. I need to look at look into that a little bit more and mm -hmm. you can pull the um the bible part down and then you can see more of the map so that's mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting too mm -hmm. yeah. that's gonna be that's John is gonna just flip when he sees that <laughs> All right. Good well, deal. it was great talking to you. I know you have a class to prepare for and I have a cow to milk, so we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> and yep. until next time, Carla Moore. Keep looking at Kathy Pollard. And I love you so much. Bye.